This is a video that I shared on Patreon five or six months ago, and today I wanted to share it with everyone. So I just wanted to talk about how I did the top here for this little zipper bag. And my piece is six by 18, and I start with three layers, the basic quilt sandwich. And so I've chosen a top layer. I almost use a mottled metallic fabric that I like a lot. But I decided to use something more like a traditional little uh, small metallic print. And I keep imagining some nice uh, warm tones. And I've picked a print that will hide mascara and other things if it gets on the back. And uh, I just want to see if I can create the vision in my mind. It's something I hope it happens to you. I think there are ways you can compensate if it doesn't. But when I'm imagining a project, I often just see something in my head, and then I work towards it. And I almost chose a leaf stencil, but I wanted something that would be a little bit big for the bag and sort of go off the edges and sort of hint at what it is, but not really be um, so distinct. And so I chose this large stencil that is a little bit bigger than my piece and I'm using three different colors here so that uh, I can make it nice and modeled because the fabric itself is so consistent across the surface and so I want my stenciling to not be so consistent. I want it to have areas that are darker and lighter and just have more interest, something for the eyes to do. And so I'm going to stencil this. I've shown it before in another video. The main thing is that you want to pounce and you want to dab a little bit off the uh, tip of whatever you're using to stencil as you go. And that helps so that you don't get big blobs because if you get a big blob on there then you have to deal with that. I work around uh, from side to side and top to bottom because I don't want to make it super thick all in one area. And so I hop around from different parts. And the whole time I'm thinking about uh, just trying to do something over the surface of this fabric that is going to be noticeable and that can be the focal point of my design and that I can stitch out. And I swear this is going to look like something when I'm done, but it will not look like that much when I pull off uh, the stencil. But I do want to mention that it's nice once you stitch around this flower, you can flip your piece over and use that stitching on the back as a guide to do fancier stitching, like a few outlines of metallic thread and any other kind of bobbin drawing. And so that's the great advantage of stitching. And I could stitch this flower, I could sketch it, but I find that it adds a lot to just go ahead and stencil it, and the stencils are so easy to cut. I'll put a bunch of links underneath the video so that you can refresh on things like that that I won't cover here. I am relieving about three quarters of an inch of this uh, batting from each end because I find in constructing the bag that that end gets so thick that I just want to relieve something of of that. I'm going to trim down a little smaller than this top and so uh, I'm taking out a little more than I really need to be out of the edge because my seam will be more like 3 8 So I just stitched this. I'm using a variegated thread which is a nice trick to have things not be too flat looking. I really do like variegation and so uh, this thread has you know slightly rusty and brown and tannish tones in it. And so I stitched that out and of course you saw I always test my tension. I try to discipline myself to do that because it can be a problem. And I'm going to add some uh, rayage applique and I'm not really sure what. So you can see that I placed it a bunch of ways and then at some point a moment of inspiration happened and when that happens you need to trust yourself and follow it. I was trying to figure out how can I add this fabric, which by the way is the favorite fabric of my entire sewing 
career and I have only a few scraps of it left and I want to use it in some bold way on this and then it hits me put it under the zipper and use that diagonal shape as a place to put the zipper and have the zipper be part of the design. I'm very worried that the diagonal zipper is going to take over what I'm hoping will be a very organic and uh, you know classy, subtle, um, but also artistic and you know maybe a little funky, maybe even a little bold design. And so I place it like this, planning to put the zipper over it. And I just want to say, obey those impulses because they will, and here you can see, I'm, I, I'm trying to figure out which color zipper will work. I've got a lot of colors, but nothing that's perfect. What if it's blue? What if it's dark green, white? I'm just trying to figure out what will I like. And the best way to see what your eyes are going to like is to put it there and see, do my eyes like that? And I'm going, blah, blah, too weird, I don't like it. That doesn't make me happy, I'm not into that. And I do finally break down and go through my big bit of zippers. There are two or three hundred zippers in there. Most of them are big, huge black ones. But there's one appropriate, just right gold zipper of the right length left in there. And that's the zipper I end up using. So I'm going to follow this out and unfortunately I turned the camera off when I stitched this but I'll try to make sure that it shows. I just do sort of big wavy lines um, around the edges. I like to do wiggly little lines that make it so that when it trims out it only frays so much. I wanted to mention that when I do all this, when I'm really creating stuff and primarily just trying to work and film it but not talk about it while I'm doing it. I always have something on Netflix. Here I'm attempting to balance the other side of the thing by putting my second favorite uh, metallic fabric. This one looks a lot like kernels of corn. And I use that for the center of the flower because I want a little bit of sparkly gold on that side of the bag to sort of balance the sides. I, I'm okay with them being different but I don't want them to seem like they don't belong together. And it's going to be difficult because one's a big stencil flower and the other is a bunch of raw edge applique. Here I'm using a favorite uh, floral fabric that I've used underneath uh, other fabrics to do raw edge applique a lot. You'll notice that I'm stitching those same shapes that I talked about as reminding me of biology, cellular pictures that you look at, plant shapes. And I do this for a lot of reasons. I do it so that I can paint those lines if I want and paint those cells or I can flood color inside the cells. It covers ground quickly. When you free motion quilt as tightly as I do, sometimes you want some of the areas to just be covered quickly and you need to have also a lot of variation in your design so that the eye is interested and sees a lot of richness when you're trying to do what I'm trying to do. And I'm cutting out intentionally to capitalize on the white that's in that pattern. The more contrasting it was, the more likely I was to cut it out because I want the whole thing to kind of blend and for the areas to not be strongly differentiated from each other. Now I'm doing something that I've learned uh, is very successful and I'm taking a dark thread and I'm double outlining the outside of my flower and other elements on the piece because I've learned that not only do I like the way the double outlining looks but then if I decide to paint in those areas it can really highlight those objects. I know you're not supposed to outline everything in art, but I like to outline things a lot. And so that's kind of the way I think of this, because you'll see later that it really livens up the design to have those big strong lines. And it helps balance the sides, because there's so much more color on the zipper side of the bag. And by juxtapose, I just mean put things together that seem like they don't necessarily go. 
And so now I'm doing a lot of tiny little stipple with very light thread. My thread is, is white, I believe. And I decide that it's a little bit too subtle. And so to do this last area, I go ahead and put a little darker thread in and just do that final area that way. And one of the things I want to say is do, don't be afraid to change boats. If you've stitched a third of your purse top and you think, oh, I wish I had used a darker thread for this, don't be afraid to just finish up with a different thread. I'm not saying, you know, it should change from yellow to dark green in one line of stitching, but finish out the area you're doing or end in a circle and then pick up with the green and find a way to make it make sense that you've changed. And then you can have that big contrast that your eye is wanting when you see that the thread you're using is a little boring. And so don't be afraid to, to switch and just change and, and only rip out if your stitches are terrible. Don't, don't pick out an area where you decided to use too light a thread. Try to move forward instead of going back. Obviously, if you've stitched an area with really incompetent stitching that's going to catch on things and pull and spoil the piece over time, you want to rip that out. But other than that, you want to keep moving forward. Here I am just stitching down those ends where I pulled the batting out. I was careful while I was quilting to not jump off those and snap threads, but now I'm just uh, tacking it down as quickly as possible so it doesn't cause me any grief while I'm doing my construction. So I've just brushed this out and I'm trimming it and I want to remind you, you're going to have to heat set your inks and paints later and I will put brand names and links below the video for anything that I've used that you might want to try to find or uh, find something to substitute, something similar. You can see throughout the video I keep fussing with the zipper because I'm just not sure and I'm still double checking and thinking thinking about having it run off the bag. What if I used black? Am I going to like that? What if I put it here? What if I sewed it in like a traditional zipper and had just a little bit of it showing? That in itself though would take up a fair amount of my design and I really wanted to do the surface installation. Especially now that I figured out the really easy fast way to do it and have it be really neat. Now I'm just going to paint these. I'm not sure how much I'm going to paint when I start but I do want to outline this flower and really bring some bold color that it visually balances the other side of the piece. And I do feel like in the end, the piece ends up a little light visually on this side, but in a neat way, not in just a thoughtless, you know, I didn't use my eyes while I was making this sort of way. And as I paint this, I. I use a sharp angle brush that I think I actually got at the Ross in a little package of brushes. Um, and it's my favorite right now until it gets, you know, too frayed up and uh, it won't cut a straight line for me anymore. It'll still probably remain my favorite. And I just work from side to side and flipping the piece around until I get all of this painted. And I paint these differently every time and sometimes I actually flood areas like watercolor. I didn't do that here, but uh, I thought I was going to when I started and then instead I painted this. And just do that. Trust your impulse in the moment and, and just kind of go with the flow of your own ideas about what will look nice. And, you know, if listening to music while you work uh, helps, turn on some music that you find relaxing, even if it's, you know, really loud and obnoxious. I tend to paint and do a lot of these tasks with the television on and so I've got something on Netflix right now. Some people will tell you when you're adding more embellishment to something you're working on not to gild the lily and you know sometimes you don't want to but sometimes it's a little fun to do it and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going with sort of a more is more uh, philosophy right now and I'm going ahead and outlining all these areas and now I'm just adding a little more gold to the flower 
Sometimes I've completely painted inside all my stitching on this flower. That looks nice, but it is time consuming. And I just wanted to whip this out so that I could uh, make the video to construct the bag. And so I'm not gonna go that in depth. And I, I kind of like it where I'm just adding areas. I'm just following stitching in some places on one side, but just painting on non-existent lines and others. And I'm just trying to add enough so that it balances out, so that there's a little bit of added stitching all around the bag, you know, not too regimented, and have it look natural. And then I, I like it, and so, so I'm gonna stop. And uh, that reminds me of something that I wanted to make sure and say, and that is that it's awesome to take and make one design like this. But if you really want to start to free up your creativity and start coming up with your own aha moments and find what you really want to make, I recommend that you make a decision, make one or two little bags out of something you have laying around and get the construction down. And then if you're very comfortable with that, make a decision to make one of these for half a dozen people that you know. and make the tops, stencil the same thing or different things on all of them. Maybe use the same stencil but position it differently or maybe cut a few different stencil stencils and do two or three of each one. And then sit down and paint. And what I tend to do is start with light paints and, and work up to darker colors and I try to clean my water as I'm switching to a completely different color set. and and do these work through them where you do each stage first you stencil then you stitch and add some raw edge applique and uh, work through the stack doing completely different things on each one and what happens is you get bored and you don't want to make them all the same and in the moment when you're stitching or when you're painting you'll just try something different and then you'll like the way it looks and you'll keep doing it more and that's when the really good stuff happens. It's not when you're, you know, you've gotten up in the morning and you know you're going to paint this later and you think of a great idea, although that can happen. In my experience, what happens more often is you're just working, you're just doing enough of them that you're getting tired of your same old tried and true, and then, or you, your hand slips, and then you've got to do something to cover up that smear of paint and you like that and you follow that and that leads you to something you never ever imagined that you do but it can end up easily becoming your favorite part of the bag and as we've talked about before it started with a mistake and so in my next video we're going to start making some purse tops